So today we're going to be taking a look at Melissa Ray's work. These five, six photos right here. Melissa Ray is a wedding photographer based out of Long Beach, California, but she also takes amazing portraits and is just an overall creative individual. So she generously sent me some of her unedited raw images to play around with when I was testing my new presets and I wanted to do a quick little tutorial showing how I would edit each of these photos. So first of all, how epic are these first two shots? Like, where did you even get those amazing moth slash butterfly things? And the colors are just incredible. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and see what will look best here. Just hovering over some of them. Oh, I love that faded look with the grain. Of course, you can always add grain to any photo. Um, let's see. I think we'll go with... Um, let's do butterscotch. I always choose butterscotch in a lot of my own photos, so that must be one of my favorites. And the blue is looking just slightly desaturated to me. And maybe put it back on the cooler side and darken it a little. And let's play around with the orange. Melissa and I also have very different editing styles, so that's kind of fun to play with the work of someone who edits very differently than you do. Uh, let's increase the warmth. But overall, I'm already pretty happy with it. I'm just playing around with the toning. Um, let's see, did I add lens corrections? No, I did not. You should always add lens corrections first, and whenever I'm making a tutorial, I don't follow my own advice. So, now that we have lens corrections in there, it brightened it up a little and corrected some of the distortion. Um, but I think I still want the shadows to be a bit brighter. It's all about balancing it out. Because we can't go too bright without getting everything else too bright. Okay, I'm liking that. This is where we started. This is where we are. Maybe darken the blue a little. I really like that original tone of the blue. It's like more of a purpley blue. But um, with the tone of the orange, just making sure it all looks good together. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave this one. And we could just copy and paste for the next one, but I'm going to start over, maybe with a different preset. Let's try Lemon Drop. So I, if you had a darker style, you could just leave it like this. It looks really pretty, but I'm going to brighten it up quite a bit. Ooh, it's already looking beautiful. See, in this case, I like Lemon Drop better than... Uh, butterscotch. Like, I don't think I'm even going to do anything else. Beautiful. Oh, I love that shot so much. Okay, this one is very dark to begin with, which I honestly recommend. Um, dark exposures. I mean, not super underexposed, but like exposing for the highlights. So in this case, all the highlights are very intact and nothing is blown out. Um, I tend to shoot slightly lighter than this, but this we can still definitely work with, especially since it's a raw file. So I love this vibe. We're kind of deserty, and uh, the green and red are always a fun combination to play with. Even though I hate green and red ordinarily because it's like Christmas colors, but in photos for some reason I use them a lot because they're complementary. And when you play with the tones, they just kind of I don't know. They work out. As long as it's not like a true green and red, it's more of a mint or, you know, yellowy green and then an orangey red. So I guess it's almost more like orange and green, but we'll see how the tones end up. Already liking this, but I think the yellow is a little bit too pronounced. Let's bring back some orange. Make it lighter still. 
lately my my style has been like extremely low contrast but I think there's a boundary that you always have to pay attention to because you can go too low with contrast and then that doesn't look pretty it just looks accidental and like you don't know what you're doing I think I am happy with that although now looking at her face I feel like it has a bit of uh, there's some spots that are too red I mean too orange but other than that yeah I like that so that was peppermint I believe that we started with love this shot as well um, I have a feeling everything is going to look good. Oh, not that one, because that one emphasizes blue, which only looks good in very specific settings. But a lot of these look good on this photo because it's just such a good photo to begin with. See, this this level of exposure is what I would recommend because the highlights are still intact, but like it's a very even exposure. And it helps that, you know, she's in the shade and there aren't like beams of sunlight coming at her, which makes things trickier. But if you can just think of this level of exposure when you're working with, you know, the, the on-camera settings, uh, then for these presets, that's like where you want to be. Okay, which one do we want to choose? I think I'm going to go with Marshmallow. And I'm going to bring back some of that yellow. Then I'm really just going to lighten it a tad. And I'm happy with that. Actually, let me get rid of this clarity. I don't really want it here. And I should do lens corrections. There we go. How beautiful is that? So that was Marshmallow. Same lovely model. Uh, this time we do have some harsh uh, contrast and shadows going on. So, but you can see how Melissa still exposed it where these highlights are intact and you can easily bring down all the detail. So just pay attention to that. You don't want to overexpose and I like exposing for the highlights, which tends to mean slightly underexposed. It's all relative though. Ooh, bubble gum looks nice. Depends on the vibe you want to take this photo, but Bubble gum popped out at me. Let's go with bubble gum. I think I named it bubble gum because, yeah, there's 20% saturation of red shadows, which is quite a bit. And in this case, I really like that. And I am pretty... Oops. Ah, no. Didn't mean to delete you. Come back. I am pretty satisfied with this. What I meant to press was before and after. So, yeah, I love that. One last photo by Melissa. How random and fun is this? Like a dollar store shopping cart, like the green and purple and this outfit. I love it. Okay, so the colors here are going to be a little trickier because there's so much going on. But we won't struggle too much. Mm, let's go with cotton candy. And first thing I'm going to do is just correct the tilt because that's bothering me. And ordinarily I wouldn't do this in a quick tutorial, but I'm going to clone that out. You could leave it in if you wanted to add to like the grunginess of a dollar store parking lot and I'm gonna bring the oranges back down a little bit to being more red and let's see the teal let's bring it back to the blue side darken it a little and the purple what's going on here Maybe it's magenta more. That, yeah, there we go. So we want to bring some of that saturation back. And what if we increase the warmth? That's barely noticeable. 
I do like it warmer. Uh, let's brighten it up. I am trying to edit like as if these were my own photos. So my style is very bright and low contrast. Um, let's raise the whites a little. Okay, lens corrections. Why do I always forget about you? It's usually because I'm copying and pasting, so it doesn't pass my mind very often. Okay, so that's that. If we really wanted to add to the grunginess, we could amp up the grain, which is actually really fun in this case. What about the green tone? Oh yeah, I like getting rid of more of the cool green and making it to the yellow. That's cool. Okay, I love that shot. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed Melissa's work. I really did. And you can see how nicely these presets uh, fit this style. So thank you for watching. And if you want to see the next tutorials in this series where I will be editing all the other photos in this role, be sure to subscribe to be notified when I post a new video.